Part A of the question asks us to calculate u prime of 1. So this would mean the derivative of u when x is equal to 1. But in order to calculate the derivative of u, we would come over and take a look at how u is defined. It looks as though u of x is equal to f of x multiplied by g of x. And it's important to take note that there is a multiplication sign between f of x and g of x because that indicates that we would have to use the product rule in order to determine the derivative of the u function. So, of course, the product rule, which gives us u prime of x, would equal what I like to call fig plus gif. It's just a helpful mnemonic to remember the product rule. We will see that f prime is going to be the derivative of the f function. And in order to get the derivative of the f function, we're, end, we're going to end up using the graph over here at left. g will just be the g function, which we can actually see is denoted in the blue color. g prime is going to be the derivative of g. And again, we'll use the graph to obtain the derivative of g. And then f is the f function, which is given by the red curve in the picture. Now, we must remember that we're actually determining the derivative of u specifically when x is equal to 1. So we're going to be focusing on an x value of 1. So when it comes time to looking at the graph, our x value will be this guy right here. So let's begin to plug in here. We would have u prime of 1. And according to our product rule, that would equal f prime of 1 multiplied by g of 1 plus g prime of 1 multiplied by f of 1. Now, very importantly here, f prime of 1, what does that mean? If we go over to the graph when x is equal to 1 and move up to the curve, we would be located at this point right here on the f function. Well, to determine f prime of 1, what that really means is the slope at x equals 1. So we really just need to figure out the slope of the red line at this point. Now, of course, from a pre-calculus course, we know that slope is equal to a rise divided by a run. And that is especially true for straight lines, which is exactly what this little segment of f is right here. It's a straight line. So we can use the concept of rise over run to get its slope. Uh, to use rise over run, we would actually need two points, so it might be helpful to pick another point in addition to the one that I've already marked, and perhaps we can use this one for simplicity. And so if we move from this point to the other point, we would rise two units and then run one unit. So that would mean that the slope would equal two divided by one, or in simpler terms, two. So we now have the value of f prime of one, that would just equal 2. g of 1 would, again, have an x value of 1, but this time we would move to the g curve, which would be right there. Now, we're not looking for the slope here. We're just looking for g of 1 rather than g prime of 1. And that would just mean that we need the y value or the y coordinate when x is 1. So if we look back at the curve, when x is 1, move up to the g function, and then take a look at the y coordinate, and we can see that that would just be equal to 1 right there. So this would equal 1. Following the product rule, we would then add, and then we have g prime of 1. And just like before, that's going to be the slope at x equals 1. We'll be using the g function in this case, which would mean that we need the slope of this line segment right here. And because it's a line segment, we can once again use rise over run. So in addition to this point, why don't we select another point? We could even just use this guy right here. So moving from this point to this point, we would rise a uh, value of negative 1. Notice it's negative 1 because you would be moving downward. And then you would run this way by positive 1. So your slope would equal 
the negative 1 over the positive 1, which simplifies to negative 1. So g prime of 1 would be negative 1. And then we'll multiply by f of 1. f of 1 means we have to go back to the red curve that is denoted by the letter f. Here is x equals 1. Move up to the curve and then get the y coordinate of that point, which looks like it's equal to 2. So we would multiply this by 2. The rest is just simplifying. That's going to give us our answer for u prime of 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. We end up with 0 as the answer to part A. In part B, we are asked to calculate v prime of 5, which is the derivative of the v function when x is equal to 5. The v function is given over here in the top right corner. We'll notice that we have a division sign here. So rather than using the product rule, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And that would give us the derivative v prime of x. For the quotient rule, I like to use the mnemonic fig minus gif divided by g squared. So that would mean in order to calculate v prime of 5, we would simply have f prime of 5 multiplied by g of 5 minus g prime of 5 multiplied by f of 5, all divided by g of 5. And then don't forget that that whole quantity will be squared. So we just have to evaluate these individual quantities. Let's begin with f prime of 5. And again, that's going to be the slope at x equals 5 on the f function. So we'll come over here, and let's see. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's move up to the f function, and we would be located right here, which means we simply need the slope of that line segment. Just as before, let's pick an additional point. Probably this one is best. So traveling from this point to this point, we would rise a negative 1 and then run 1, 2, 3 units. So that would mean that the slope of this line segment would be the rise of negative 1 over the run of 3. So that's going to give us our f prime of 5. We're going to multiply that by g of 5. Let's clean this up a little bit. So for g of 5, we would go over to an x value of 5, move up to g, and we could see that the y coordinate right there is 2. So we'll multiply that by 2. Minus g prime of 5. Here we are again, back at g, when x equals 5. We need the slope of this line segment. Let's pick another point right here. Let's rise 2 units and then run 3 units. So that would have a slope of 2 thirds. f of 5. We return to the f function, which was right here. Slide over to get the y coordinate, which was 3. So we can plug that in. And then we'll divide this by g of 5 squared. Remember, we already found g of 5 to equal 2. So then we would just have 2 squared in the denominator. We will go ahead and simplify this. Perhaps you're allowed to use a calculator. But on the top, you would have negative 2 thirds minus 2, all divided by 4. My own preference to simplify this is to multiply everybody by this denominator. So I'm going to multiply everybody by 3. So this one times 3, this one times 3, and that one times 3. That's going to give me negative 2 minus 6 over 12, negative 8 over 12, Divide the numerator and denominator by 4, and we're going to get negative 2 thirds. So that would be the correct answer to part B.